Auto layout can be added to frames to create dynamic frames and components that respond to the size of their child objects, such as a button that grows with the length of its label. We can tell items to take up all of the empty space available to you and fill their parent container. Use properties like padding to let your items breathe, or use alignment properties to change their position within the auto layout frame, or evenly distribute empty space between them. Auto layout can be applied to almost every one of your components to make them more flexible and dynamic. In this series, we'll show you how to use auto layout to create several different components for this trip planning website, beginning with the basic button use case and working our way up from there. Click the link in the description to get a copy of the file from the Figma community to follow along. To create an auto layout button, select the text tool, click to create a text layer and type button for the label. We'll also apply one of our text styles. With the layer selected, use the shortcut Shift A to add auto layout. This places the label into an auto layout frame, which we can add a fill to. And that's it. You have a functioning auto layout frame that can be a foundation for a button. When you change the label, the button will dynamically resize to fit. Auto layout frames have additional properties in the auto layout section of the right side bar. Auto layout frames can have two directions vertical and horizontal. The space between items property creates empty space between each item in the auto layout. Our button has only one item, a single text layer, so these two properties don't have a visible effect. Don't worry, we'll cover them in another video. Next is padding around items, which creates empty space between the bounding box of the child items and the bounding box of their containing frame. Use this to give the items in your auto layout frame some breathing room. We can enter a number here to set uniform padding on all sides. This field also supports comma-separated values that match CSS notation, so we can type 8, 16 to add 8 points of padding to the top and bottom and 16 points to the left and right. To the right is the alignment flyout menu. Click it to open an interactive diagram to set different alignment options. This isn't relevant for our button, so we'll cover this in another video. Individual padding can also be customized here, and we can see the values we entered earlier. Auto layout frames and the items within them also have resizing properties. We can set the resizing property on both the vertical and horizontal axis. An auto layout frame set to hug contents will resize to be as small as possible to surround all of its children, only leaving space for padding. We can also use the interactive diagram to the left to change the resizing properties. We can see all four arrows are pointing inwards or hugging the center. Text layers can also be set to hug contents, which behaves identically to the text resizing properties auto width and auto height. Some types of layers like vector shapes can't use hug contents as they can't contain child objects. We'll learn how to use the other resizing properties in future examples. To wrap up our button, let's round the corners to four, change the color of both the button and the label using our color styles, rename the button to button slash primary and label to label, and finally turn the button into a component using command option K. Since components are frames, they can also have auto layout added to them. Creating an auto layout button is easy. We just need to add auto layout to a single text layer. In the next video, we'll use this button in an auto layout navigation menu.